Live from New York, it's Ask an Engineer. Hey, that's right. Never stopping. Always at home in. We are asking. New York Tough and New York Strong doing Ask an Engineer. From here. And New York Smart. Yes. So We're, we're still in Manhattan. We're just not at the right. factory. That's right. Uh, welcome to Ask an Engineer. Uh, we've been doing Ask an Engineer for over a decade. Normally, we uh, do it from our Adafruit factory. In the past, we did it from Adafruit Apartment. And right now, we're doing it from Adafruit Apartment because uh, Lady Aid and I are at the factory, but we do it in different shifts. We're always together, but our team members at the factory, uh, some are early morning, some are afternoon, and some people are night people like us. So we're doing essential manufacturing for uh, anyone that has needed it, doctors, researchers, um, a lot of the, DIY ventilators. A, a lot of the components and testing equipment that's needed for ventilators to you name it, just about everything. Then we also, um, we'll talk about later in the show, we did face shields for the city of New York. Um, we have more plastic on the mm -hmm. way, so we'll talk about that. And uh, we're also doing logistics and uh, some amount of consulting Engineering services. to help not only New York State, New York City, the United States, and also the world. So All of humanity. Right. So just to give you an update, every single day we post on our blog because people are like, oh, I'm worried about Adafruit or what's going on or whatever. We post on our blog. There's a category called Adafruit Chronicles. And every single day you get a glimpse of some of the things that we're doing at Adafruit or in New York City. And we wanted to give people an idea of, like, we're... We're still functioning. Uh, most of our team, pretty much like 99% of them, are doing what they should, which is stay at home. Um, if we're going to flatten the curve, as they say, everyone has to do their part. We have a small crew that's doing the essential manufacturing, the essential shipping, uh, logistics, and things like that. Um, we're fine. Uh, we take a lot of precautions. We wear masks. We have gloves. Uh, we do a lot of sanitary procedures. Our entire team has uh, protocols. Every employee that comes in, uh, there's no contact uh, temperature. Wait, what's my temperature? Well, mine is 97.7. 97 that's pretty good. Okay. And yours is 98. So we do this with all of our employees. We also have a log to make sure we're uh, taking good care of each other. And uh, we'll, we'll get there. We decided to uh, shut down most of Adafruit earlier than uh, New York City and New York State recommended. Yeah. We got ahead of that. And we had been preparing for uh, this as we saw it winding its way through China and then mm -hmm. the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. So as far as like the, the health of the company... Um, our sales are already down 50%. We just had our March numbers yeah. already down 50%. April, um, you can expect it to be uh, probably 10% uh, of our sales. Mm. And uh, we have resources. We have gas in the gas tank to get us going. However, um, I'll say it, um, you know, please pick up a gift certificate. That helps us. Uh, you can spend them later. So it's not like you're just giving us money. You get something for it eventually. Um, Adafruit IO. It's our IO service. Uh, we, it's for free, but you can do a pro account. We have a few slots open for Adabox. We'll be shipping Adabox maybe next month the, or the month after. We as have, soon as we can. We have a um, partner company that's going to help us out with that. And also, of course, if you want to hire us for manufacturing, engineering, R&D, or logistics services, we are now doing that. We have that in the store, and we'll talk about that later. Um, this is Lady Aid and I. Um, just to show you, we have... Um, uh, all forms of protection. Um, I'm actually wearing a, a hat usually now, um, but we're in the factory and it was just Lamore and I. Uh, I also wear long sleeves. And of course you can't see this, but I have gloves. And when we go in, we also take our temperatures. So um, we are manufacturing, we're doing this. Uh, everything that you do with Adafruit supports these people. This just happens to be um, some of the team. Uh, it'll be interesting to see when we could take a photo like this again, because obviously we're more than uh, you know, six feet together. But we'll figure it out. We'll get on top of the roof and we'll just, uh, you know, be a few feet away from each other when it's appropriate. So that's the latest that's going on with Adafruit. Um, thank you, everyone, who's reached out to us. If you're someone um, that works at a hospital or if you're someone who's looking for PPE, um, please use our clearinghouse email, COVID19 at Adafruit.com. We have been sourcing some stuff for local hospitals and um, we managed to get more plastics for the face shields we're doing for the New York City government. Um, but please keep it there. Also, and we'll talk about this later, you can self-check out on the site. If you're a researcher or if you're someone who's developing this, you don't have to check with us first. Uh, everyone has been honest and said, here's what I'm working on. And you can self-check out on the Adafruit site and we can still get those components and yep. part to you, parts to you. So that's what's going on. Um, but of course, like always, we're doing Ask an Engineer. So... 
on tonight's show, show and tell. People around the world showing and sharing projects. We've been doing show and tell for about a decade now. We've extended it to an hour. Ask an Engineer is right now. Show and tell is 7 p.m. So if you miss show and tell after you hear about from uh, Lady Ada with all the projects, you can join next week. John Parks Workshop, we have a special video and a make code minute. We have an excellent Python on Hardware Overview uh, breaking news newsletter from Catney. Um, help Wanted. Help Wanted is just going to be general, like, hey, everyone, let's help each other. Time travel, we're going to look around the world of makers, hackers, artists, and engineers. We have some 3D printing. We have some Made in New York City factory footage, photos, and more. This is the biggest segment of the show tonight. We have some new products. We can talk about new products Yay. tonight. We have some top secret. We're going to answer your questions, and we do that on Discord, adafruit.it slash Discord. We have over 17,000 members. Um, I haven't checked in a bit because I have been 24-7 recently, but there's at least 17,000 people over there. It is the 24-7 hacker space that you can bring your granddaughter to. That is what folks called it. All that and more on, you guessed it. Yay. Ask an engineer. We're here. We're so, doing it. We're just a reminder, if you want to support Adafruit during this time, Get a gift certificate. That's right. Get Adafruit.io plus account. That's right. Get an Adabox while we still have slots. Yes. If you're a real deal person who's uh, looking for manufacturing, engineering, R&D, and logistics services, that's us. You can do that too. We have an easy way for you to work with us. So, Lady Ada, with that being said, we have a show and tell yeah. every single week. And you're going to... One gonna... hour long. You know what's interesting about the one hour um, Go time? fast. It's still not enough time. I know. I feel like we could do like a telethon and maybe we will. Actually, no, that's, here's an idea. Okay. If, uh, if we get to a point where we're like, uh-oh, run out of money. It's like month seven of this. Yeah. <laughs> um, maybe we'll do an Adafruit telethon. I, can, I would do that. And we'll have, I, have, I have an entire phone bank um, over there that we've never had to use, but I wanted to do like a call-in show. Uh, maybe I'll set it up for that. Okay. Uh, that's, it, I have ideas. I have an old, old cell phone. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Okay. All right, well, we had a ton of people. I was going to go through it real fast because there's so many. Brent showed a preview of CircuitPython cellular support. Melissa added an RSS feed to CircuitPython.org and also sort by date so you can see the newest boards. Um, Erin repaired an old-timey radio. It looks like from like the, maybe the 80s or so. Um, she uh, got an AM, FM radio up and running, and it sounds great. Um, JP is doing uh, some barbecue sensor Bluetooth hacking. He's going to do a guide on that soon. Nam Pedro um, are working with Brent on a project to make an armband core temperature monitor. Uh, they also showed off a 3D printed door grabber. Uh, Scott also has an old radio that he's trying to repair but has not been as successful as Aaron and is also studying to get a ham radio uh, license. Um, Kevin from DigiKey uh, has a bed for his son Jace uh, that's shaped like a fire truck and now it even has an LED light bar uh, with a siren. Uh, so it really is like a fire truck with an, a siren and uh, lights and everything. Chris Young uh, showed off his wheelchair joystick to mouse controller so he can have a really high precision, high speed control of his mouse um, using the same joystick that he used to, to control his wheelchair. Uh, and he also showed off a 3D printed cookie cutter he made for Easter. Geek Mom showed off her LED dress with Circuit Playground Blue Fruit and her bright wearables line for Microbit that also works with the Clue. And she demoed a Discord bot that um, takes messages for her, forwards them to Node Red on a Raspberry Pi, uploads them to Adafruit IO, which is then read by the Clue Blue Fruit board uh, through her phone to update the color of her bright wearable bags. It's basically a Discord. It's a, it's a convoluted but effective uh, Discord bot that changes the color yeah. of her bag and worth anywhere no in the world. And worth noting, um, Geek Mom, and watch the video because she's able to take all these crazy, complicated, impossible things and get it all to work and then do a live demo and have it part of something that you can do with her business. And during this time, and actually, like, by the way, time changed. Time, things are changed. Yeah, time is and fluid. And the key is to take all the change that's happening to us and turn it into positive things. So um, let me remind everyone, if you have a business, come on the show and tell. If you have a product that you sell, come on the show and tell. If you're starting your own homemaker business, come on the show and tell. Do it. Yeah. Because because that is how we're going to get through this. These, these small businesses and these things that people can do from their homes, Adafruit started with two people. And, and now we're back. We're and, back. And now we're back. <laughs> this is like Adafruit classic. Yeah. One thing I'm going to do eventually is, um, so I remade parts of Adafruit here. Um, there's a shipping station over there that I get going. I have a decontamination area. I have um, our 
uh, uh, like our photography area. I we, still have my old scope from 15 years ago. I'm still yeah. using my same oscilloscope. So, you know, back to basics. But I, I think that, you know, if, if we made it from an apartment um, during the financial crisis in 2008 all yeah. the way to now, that means this is the time for everyone to stay home and to start that business you were always thinking of. Now is the time. You can do it. You now is the time. time. In fact, do it. Watch the, got, watch the show, then go do it. Go do it. Okay. Get inspired. Come by and show us off. That's right. Uh, Sophie milled some dodecahedron pentagonal PCBs and put them together, and she made a neopixel dodecahedron. It's like a 3D shape with milled PCBs, and it worked. So that's awesome. It's her first milled PCB design. Liz is back to working on our pedometer with a clue and also made a 555 timer-based metronome project, classic 555 project. Um, Drew showed off an icebreaker FPGA running the Risk Five soft core. Virgil made a UTC time helper that reads the time from GPS. Uh, this is for his ham radio timekeeping because he needs to log the time in UTC. Uh, Pierre uh, is in Paris and working on a DIY PPE production, especially face shields that are 3D printed and optimizing them, like how to uh, get um, you know. Uh, face shields that are really fast to print, print a lot of them without having to have a lot of human interaction uh, so that people can really use their 3D printers um, most efficiently. Inspired Chaos updated uh, their um, LED matrix with a five slide pot enclosure made from a cigar box. Uh, Mark made a um, ultrasonic distance meter to uh, make sure people stay six feet away using a circuit playground um, to, uh, to indicate uh, red for too close or green uh, is when people are far away, so it's good to stay, stay distant. Uh, Ian uh, made an inspirational quote display in Queens using a Raspberry Pi and our LED matrices that scrolls uh, inspirational tweets that are filtered, which is <laughs> smart. Yeah. Uh, Eduardo showed off. Uh, he's got a thermal cam guide that's published, and he turned it into a fever scanner, so he had a modification uh, to do a simple fever scanning. Uh, Emily made a f Minecraft figure uh, robot out of cardboard and also is great for folding laundry. And she folded the entire load of laundry. Good job. Emily makes up for you kicking your dad with your bare feet. Uh, and Adam uh, came by with his scanning electron microscope. He was doing a lot of traveling. But now at home, uh, hanging out with some people have cats, some people have dogs, some people have birds. He has a scanning electron microscope. And he showed off a DLP chip, a micro mirror array on the scanning electron microscope. Super cool looking. All right. Um, all participants on the show and tell get a thank you because we're not shipping stickers right now. <laughs> <laughs> They're not essential. Stickers are not medical equipment. But you can right print now. out a picture and That's tape right. it to your project. Um, don't worry. Uh, when, w these stickers will be able to uh, go to people after... We'll do one big shipment. After we resume. Yeah. Don't worry about it. I'm not worried. There's video proof of it. That's true. It's all good. It's part of our Adafruit Live Series shows. Tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Join us for JP's workshop. And coming up on JP's show, you know, Pedro's and Scott and Katni, we're going to be doing mini show and tells. Um, and the reason we're doing that is because there might be evenings where Lady Aid and I have to be at the factory. We have to go and do something specific for mm -hmm. New York City or for a... Uh, who knows now? Um, and so we wanted to make sure the rest of the team could run show and tell uh, if we couldn't, so uh, you'll see them practicing. So now's a good time to show uh, after the show yeah. for JP um, and Noah and Pedro. And you'll probably see some special runs from Scott and Katney. So please help them out because I've had 10 years of doing show and tell and being completely disappointed and just adapting to all the software <laughs> that you have to use. But, so now you want to share the disappointment. But but you know what it is? You just have to adapt. That's right. Every day, every day. No, uh, I watch you. You're just like, wait, something changed. Every day. Every day is different. Yeah. So um, help them. Uh, get spun up so they can run the show and tells too. Yeah. So a couple things. JP has this very cool clue hand washing bot. Okay. Yeah. So this is the hand washing timer, and you scrub and scrub and scrub for 20 seconds. This video is 20 seconds long. That's exactly how long the video is. You can also just play the video. <laughs> you can also just play the video, and you can watch the video of the video showing you how long to wash your hands. Um, and it uses the proximity sensor. Yeah, so now it's over. Hands. Wave yeah. to start. Um, and then every single week on JP Show, we have a MakeCode Minute. This week was no exception. Here is MakeCode Minute. So the thing I wanted to show on the MakeCode Minute today is how you can use the Circuit Playground Express as a USB gamepad.
So we've done some USB HID keyboard stuff and mouse stuff in the past. This is a way to make a really simple two button game pad. Uh, and so that means it's gonna be recognized by any game that is looking for a game controller to be plugged in on a, on a computer over USB. I'm not sure if that applies to uh, things like, like a PlayStation 4, which I think has a USB, um, but it definitely works on a Mac and a PC and probably on a Linux box or a Raspberry Pi. Uh, what you can see I'm doing here is that if I zoom in, we have an on button down event that is using the gamepad extension. So I went to advanced extensions and I added gamepad. So you won't see it here because I've already added it. Once I add it, I get this new category. And in here, there's gamepad button, which you can pick from A, B, X, Y, left bumper, right bumper, triggers, and start and select, uh, so on. And that can either be an up or a down. Uh, and then I'm also just turning the pixels red to know I've pressed it. And then on release, I'm releasing it. So if your game has repeat, it's gonna recognize that. Okay, and so what you'll see is as I press my left button here, this gamepad tester, which I can zoom up on a bit, is gonna show that it's receiving what's called button one. And if I press the other button, it's receiving what it's calling button zero. Uh, and you can use this for anything, including analog, if you're doing things like move, movement, up, down, left, right, uh, triggers that are analog, like potentiometer style triggers. Uh, this little HTMI, HTML5 gamepad tester is great. Uh, to see this running inside of a game, here it is, Bunny Hop. So this is a uh, game made in MakeCode Arcade. And you can see here, as I press my buttons, it is allowing my little bunny character to jump. Uh, I don't think B does anything in this game, so it's literally just a one-button game, but it's kind of fun to be able to play it on a real control pad, real in quotes, rather than on your keyboard. And so that is how you can create a game pad using Circuit Playground Express inside of Make Code. And that is your Make Code Minute. All right, and that's JP's workshop tomorrow at 4 p.m. Don't forget, there's some special show and tells ahead. All right, Python on Hardware Time. This is a special edition. Special edition, and um, special thanks to Anne and the entire Circuit Python team, and of course, Katni for helping out with the newsletter. Normally, I write a big chunk of the newsletter every single week, and then during the show, I go over the newsletter. So, what we're doing now is the newsletter still going out. The team is still able to do it. I still send some links, and if I have time, I can I go in because I'm getting diverted on other stuff. And uh, now Katni is taking the newsletter and making a video version. So uh, take it away, Katni. Yay! It's that time again. This is Katni with Python on Hardware News. Every week, we put together the Python on Microcontrollers newsletter. It's available through AdafruitDaily.com. Head over there to sign up and see all of the past and current newsletters. Or tune in each week to hear what's going on. Adafruit continues to run with 100% of employees being paid and continuing to work. Most are working remotely, with a few working in the Adafruit factory as an essential service and business under New York City Executive Order to provide assistance with the COVID-19 outbreak. We continue to manufacture face masks to help alleviate the demand. Check out the Adafruit blog for photo chronicles from Phil and Lamour. We'll keep posting updates to the blog and social media as we continue to do what we can to help. CircuitPython 5.1.0 Release Candidate 0 is out. As long as no major issues are found, it will be released as 5.1.0 later this week. It comes with many new features, including Microlab, a NumPy-like fast vector module that allows you to perform mathematical operations 10 to 50 times as fast as CircuitPython alone. It is enabled on most boards except those with SAMD21 microcontrollers. Check out the Adafruit Learn system for a guide on using Microlab. And thanks to Jeff and Zoltan for all the work. Support for F-strings, a more convenient way to build strings dynamically. This is also enabled for most boards except for those with SAMD21 microcontrollers. Thanks to Josh Klar and Jeff for getting this implemented. We have a number of STM related updates included thanks to Lucian and the addition of a number of new boards. 
Thank you to everyone who is using, testing, contributing to CircuitPython, and helping out and participating on GitHub and Discord. The new Hackspace magazine, issue 29, includes a guide to coding a controller for a Frogger-like game in CircuitPython. The Adafruit Circuit Playground Blue Fruit or Express is used as a tilt sensor controller. The author writes, The tribute to this game in the new Code the Classics Volume 1 book is called Infinite Bunner, and works in much the same way, except you control a bunny. All of this hopping got us thinking about a controller. Our initial idea was that since the animals jump, so should the controller. The accelerometer can detect freefall, so it shouldn't be too hard to convert those into button presses. However, it turns out that computer-controlled frogs and rabbits can jump much, much faster than humans can, and we really struggled to get a working game mechanic, so we compromised a little and worked with flicks. Check it out at hackspace.raspberrypi.org. Josh Lowe has provided an update on the state of EduBlocks, a tool to make the transition from Scratch to Python easy via drag-and-drop Python. Updates include a new loading screen, updated mode selector, better support for adding extensions, an account system, and a learning portal update. You can see the new updates at beta.app.eduBlocks.org, and anything will be uploaded there too. Josh posts, I'd really like to get some feedback from you about the changes I've made as this is really helpful for me to know. Greg posts to Twitter a clip of using a circuit playground and gizmo display to move a sprite on the screen with collision detection using circuit Python. Brian from the Adafruit team has created an apps menu for the Open Hardware Summit wrist badge. Clock Minima is a modular clock builder in CircuitPython from Cedar Grove Studios. It provides simultaneous time output to the serial console, LED display, and display I.O. based screen. CircuitPython slithers its way onto the Zincberry single board computer. Jacob on Twitter creates an inexpensive portable carbon dioxide meter with CircuitPython the hollowing, and a Grove CO2 sensor. Joey Castillo is refining a thermometer hat project using a custom SAMD21E board programmable in CircuitPython and Arduino. Kevin is working on adding lights and sound to his son's fire truck bed using Circuit Playground Express, NeoPixels, and CircuitPython. Alvaro is using a Pi portal to display cases of COVID-19 using CircuitPython. Postman.com is hosting a collection of programmable APIs for accessing various COVID-19 related data on the web. Kano posts about adding a Python GUI to their project using PyQt and PySide2. This week, six new boards were added to CircuitPython, including the Commander, a handheld button and LED board featuring the Atmel SAMD21 microcontroller. John Park published a new guide this week for the Clue and the Bonsai Buckaroo showing how to create a plant care bot that displays fun graphics to indicate the state of your plant, all using CircuitPython. Brian finished up the DS1841 library, including support for manually setting the wiper, editing and using the LUT, and enabling or disabling the temperature compensation feature. Now that we have a log potentiometer, he hopes to see more people using these handy little I2C helpers to give them programmatic control over parts of their circuit. Dan is in the Bluetooth Low Energy Device of the Week world and is currently working on CircuitPython BLE drivers to connect a couple of different low-cost pulse oximeters. He's reliably getting data from one and found the other one difficult to work with. Finally, the PyCon US 2020 team announced planned talks, tutorials, posters, and much more online. To participate, 
Go to the PyCon US 2020 remote page and subscribe to receive five to eight email notifications over the next six weeks for published online content. Also, you may subscribe to the PyCon 2020 YouTube channel. Expected content includes recorded talks and tutorials, online summit and hatchery programs, poster presenters sharing their creations, startup row company presentations, and sponsor workshop videos and job postings. The organizers appreciate the community's patience as they work through the logistics of gathering and uploading the recordings. The goal is to begin providing content about April 15th, 2020, right when PyCon was scheduled to begin. And that is your Python on hardware news for this week. Okay, thank you, Katni, and thank you the entire CircuitPython team for keeping the newsletter going while Lady and Lady and I are working on other stuff. Okay. Help wanted. Okay, so help wanted. Uh, for help wanted, I just wanted to mention um, a lot of people are contacting us and they're like, "What can I do to help?" Start with your local areas, uh, wherever you're at. Um, check out the city's site and see what they're needing help for. Um, there's people that are doing stuff at home. There's things that they people need to do online. There's all sorts of things. Uh, if you're able to give blood in your local uh, area, I know that's always something that's desperately needed. Um, we'll put out the call for help for the things that Adafruit needs. Um, right now, we're fine. We've had an outpouring of support. There's people who want to come in um, who don't work at Adafruit and, and, and work uh, to, to make some of the PPE. We're fine for now. But I'd say start with your local areas because that's gonna uh, that's who's gonna need it uh, the most. If you are someone who's looking for someone with skills, post on jobs.adafruit.com. If you're a cool company that wants to probably scoop up some great talent, post up the job that you have. It's probably remote only at this time. Yeah. But uh, post but that's that up, fine. Post it up. A on lot of, it. we have a lot of our engineers work remote. Yeah. It's easy. Yeah. Yeah. At least uh, without this going on, uh, over half the staff works remote yeah yeah okay time travel we're gonna look around the world of makers hackers artists and engineers this week this week lots going on I time, like time is fluid so time travel this week is just current, yeah current time i couldn't really tell when the week began or, or ended so if there's any repeats on this i'm sorry um i just there was a lot going on sorry so uh reuters mentioned adafruit uh over a hectic weekend new york factories retool to make coronavirus face shields for nurses then Wired had an article, engineers make DIY face shield, now it's helping doctors. Then, Wall Street Journal, if you want to see Colin in uh, Wall Street Journal, New York manufacturers mobilized to make face masks, medical gowns. Um, one of the things that turned out to be a good idea for us was open source hardware. It was a good cause and a good business. But uh, this is really interesting. So this, if you look really close... This is uh, one of the ventilator projects that are that's happening right now in Italy. And it sounds like it got pretty far. It's got veins, it's got like yeah. the tubes. It's got oh, I'm going to show the video. Latches and everything. And uh, if you look, what what's that in the center? That's a feather. Yay! And so I was able to share this with the team, and then uh, someone uh, made sure we got to look at the video. So I yeah. want to show this video now. This is feather operating a ventilator. Neat. This qui che vedete è praticamente come se fosse un polmone. E quella macchina lì è il respiratore che lo deve gonfiare, questo è l'embrione di un sistema che funziona e che è in grado di dare quello che i nostri pazienti hanno bisogno, ventilatori. So a lot of the stuff that Adafruit makes, um, you'll see, you know, this photo going around. A lot of the stuff that, that we do are in things like this. But other things that happened this week. Medtronic decided to, um, it's not exactly open source. We should but be clear. Published. We should be clear because, you know, there are, hey, you know what? There's actually still uh, some jerks on Twitter. I thought this would have stopped that, but nope. Uh, so they published all their files. This is the first step of many for people to maybe remake and yeah, make the, the Medtronic ventilators. It's a 2007 design that they published. I actually downloaded it because of helping a few groups with their ventilator design. So I actually was curious, you know, what sensors were they using? So it's interesting that some people are like, oh, well, you know, you can't just, like, download it and put it on another mail and then 3D print the case. But you never would anyways. Yeah. <laughs> Instead, what is I find useful is a great reference document to see, like, how do you do the feedback circuitry? How do you do the power supply design? How do you do, like, you know, the, the um, which sensors do they use? For example, you know, I was trying to figure out what, what sensitivity is required for sensors. So I looked up the part numbers in 
the schematic and I used that to cross reference for a, a modern sensor yet yeah, because this design is is you know probably 10 maybe 15 years old a lot of components aren't available but the overall design style hasn't changed much and so I thought yeah. that was actually quite valuable and I think when they released the source code even if it's not open source use it as a way of seeing how that kind of software is written like you can use it as a reference I still think that's a value even if you yeah. can't just manufacture this design that's right other open source hardware news. So um, Adafruit is using this time to certify all of our open source hardware. So we uh, mean to get to it. Yeah. So yeah, that, washing here, the floor. So Oshawa has a certification process, and yeah. we manually submitted, you know, I think a few in the past. Two, it was like two or three, yeah. But it took a long time for us, and we said, well, we can either spend a bunch of time certifying, or we can make hardware. Mm -hmm. Now we have staff and time, so we're going through, and already you see this like blurry, Blue. this blurry area here. Yeah. So this is like 50 or 60 boards. You get all the feathers, I think, down, so and that circuit Python boards down. Overnight, you'll see Adafruit going to the number one spot for Oshawa certified hardware. We're very proud of that. Yay! Uh, and We've we will always be done proud it. Of that. Now We've always done official. it. And uh, I, I am looking forward to that one guy who says, you're still not open enough. You're still not open source hardware enough, but I'm removing yet another reason or uh, vector for for that. So uh, thank you everyone who's working on the team on this. Thank you, Ashwa. Thank you, Michael Weinberg, for doing this. That's coming now. In addition to us having all this open source hardware, we have learn guides. We In did. Fact, we have okay. 2,169 learn guides and... Lady Ada, what's on the big board? Okay, so last week we had the Chauncey Flower Bot, Care Bot with the clue and the Bonsai Buckaroo. So it's, uh, you know, watering a plant automatically in a cool 3D printed Chauncey Bot design. Uh, Aaron also released a game clock uh, with Circuit Playground and Make Code. So you're stuck at home, you have a Circuit Playground, maybe you're playing a lot more board games, chess, uh, checkers, backgammon, all that good stuff, uh, or Scrabble, I think was in the video. Um, you can make a little countdown timer uh, to keep people on time. It has buzzers and LEDs, a good programming project. We've got uh, from Eduardo Bloom, uh, very timely. We, just, we started this guide a long time ago, but it's released now. It's a MLX uh, thermal camera use it with image recording, a very advanced uh, thermal camera using the MLX uh, 32 by 24 pixel sensor. Um, it can do you know min-max average temperatures. And then, as you saw in the show and tell, it can be converted into a fever scanner pretty easily. So all open source design. Um, if you have this part kicking around in a Pi badge or any other uh, Arduino compatible board with a screen, you can put this on there and make your own thermal camera. Uh, we have a little guide on how to place an essential uh, COVID-19 related order uh, for essential businesses doing you know, military, um, defense, medical, uh, COVID related, research and development, um, and some other essential, like, you know, in some places, uh, you know, code, um, uh, education from home, uh, you know, school at home, homeschooling type stuff. That's all is, uh, marked essential. Yeah. Um, there's now a way for us to know, you know, how to check off the box when you log in. Yeah, most orders have been going out same day, and we've been able to meet the demand. Um, I'll do a tally later, but the first few days that we did this, we got out, got out 15,000 components all together to various locations. It sounds yeah. like a lot, but you know, components are small. So anyway. Yeah. So um, it's an easy guide. Just good. It, we wanted to have something to point people to in case they were like, how do I do this? It's like, oh, this guy. Um, Kathy Ciceri made a low tech buzzing operation game. So this is a no microcontroller operation game. Um, basically it's just, you know, you make a, a circuit with your tweezers and some tin foil. Uh, so a fun project. If you have a couple parts kicking around, no coding or soldering required. Um, Melissa uh, um, published her second part of her uh, Circuit Python libraries for Blinka guide. This is how to add a single board computer, Linux computer, to our Blinka support library. So we have Raspberry Pi, we have the Jetson Nano, we have BeagleBoard, we have some like rock pies and banana pies and onion pies. But maybe there's some other single board computer. Uh, if it's running Linux, chances are you can have it. Um, use our CircuitPython libraries. So you get to unlock, you know, 200, 300 different sensor libraries. Even saw somebody who was like using um, uh, the pink board, the FPGA board that can run a chip that can then run Linux. And they showed how to get Blinka libraries working on it to get OLED support. So it's like, it's that easy. You just do a little bit of work and then forever and ever all of our stuff um, uh, all of our libraries and code examples will run on your single board Linux computer. So she goes through all the details of doing that, including PWM support, analog support, SPI, I2C, GPIO, chip detection, all that good stuff. 
um, so that you can use all of our sensors and drivers. Kevin Walters uh, wrote a really sweet detailed guide on how he made a sensor plotter all in CircuitPython for the Clue, which has a ton of sensors. So using the buttons as a menuing system, um, here you know, in the GIF you can show it's plotting red, green, and blue, um, but it can also plot uh, you know, proximity, light, uh, motion, orientation, uh, you know, the pin capacitive touch signals, all that good stuff. And then JP uh, published uh, another timely guide. People have been asking for this, a no touch hand wash timer for Circuit Playground in Make Code. Again, a really good beginner project. You have a Circuit Playground Express, you're stuck at home, want to do a fun coding project. Uh, here's a great way to um, make a project that you can then use. And uh, especially for kids who are like, how can I um, take the current situation and learn from it, make it a positive learning experience. Yeah. This is a great guide from JP, who's an expert make coder. Okay, more guides soon. So many. Uh, before you go to Made in New York City, don't forget if you want to support Adafruit, get a gift certificate. Adafruit IO, you can get Adabox supports us, a woman owned company here in New York City. No loans, no venture capital. However, the loan part might change. If they're giving away free money to keep us going, we might just take it. So I'll take free money. More on that later. Yeah. Um, yeah, why not? But not yet. Yeah. So, uh, Main New York City factory footage. I wanted to play the video. This is from Dano and Michelle and Vance and Travis and Colin and Isaac and Garrett, who worked on the first round of face shields. Take it away. Thousand. Yeah, that was the first thousand or so, and uh, we've been cranking away. We have more materials on the way. Uh, also, we've been posting on the hashtag Adafruit Chronicles and also in the blog category, and uh, we've been able to uh, work with our partners like UPS and uh, DigiKey to get in a lot of the essential components for a lot of the things that we need to build and make. We've been doing shipping. Um, sometimes it's a little lonely. And uh, you can see Adafruit's a lot different. This is our warehouse, and uh, Lady Ada and I are either the early morning shift or late night shift, depending on how you want to call it. And uh, we're getting work done. And uh, we're thankful that we're able to supply something that's very valuable and needed for not only New York City, but New York State, and of course the USA, and of course the world. And uh, we also had a little bit of fun because, uh, you know, we're still artists, we're still weird, so we gotta, we gotta keep with that. Um, this is uh, not too far from Adafruit. So Adafruit, uh, if the building wasn't away, you would be able to see this. But this is the uh, US and UNS. UNS Comfort. UNS and UNS. Uh, you can see the helicopters and the flotilla they had. And this was uh, right outside our window. So we were able to see this here in New York City. And uh, it was spectacular. Um, it's also humbling because it, this is heavy. Like it's like wow, like this is happening, and to see a, a ship like this come into New York so fast, and to know that it's going to help a lot of people, um, it's uh, it's it's why we say New York strong and New York tough. But it's also like, thank you everyone who got this going because it means that we can use the hospitals for more urgent care and use this for other things. Um, I did a little time lapse. You know, I never had to use that. I, all of our team does time lapses, and I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna use time lapse. So I made a time lapse of this. I'm like, beep 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 beep. It goes back. It goes forth. It it, it never went backwards. I did that. that was, yeah. That was my idea. It's leaving. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> bye. We're done here. Uh uh. Yeah. We'll take another time lapse when it goes. Yeah. And uh, here it is. Um, and then uh, we didn't shoot this. This I grabbed from Twitter. Um, I, 
this may this is either cool or maybe not. So the Empire State Building decided to turn itself into a giant siren. And I think it was okay, but it's also, like, that's kind of scary. So, uh, anyways, um, it was neat, though. Um, the other thing that I want to talk about is I think a lot of people are going to be wearing masks soon. And so I think, especially for kids, you know, we're going to have to explain to them that when you wear a mask, you're wearing a mask because it means you care about other people. And we wanted to have the circuit playground characters reflect that. And we wanted to have our puppets reflect that. I like and, how Mo has just like a little one in the middle. Cause <laughs> yeah. And what we wanted to do was, you know, make this so it's not scary. It just means, hey, like, you care about other people. Um, a mask doesn't protect you. It protects other people. And um, so, you know, this is uh, this is the mask that, uh, that I have. Um, it's my spare one that I had with me. So I said, well, let me just take some photos with it. And um, we just wanted to to start this because we, we think this is going to be one of the many things that we're all going to have to adapt to. And I think especially for young people, um, it, it's okay. And it's something that is going to be important. And it just means that we're thinking about others. And I think that's the, the way we can approach it in a positive way. And uh, we also have been taking photos uh, as we've been going back and forth to the factory. And uh, it really does look like this. It really is empty. It's um, never that. I mean, it's we always don't, trafficy. We don't, we don't see other humans, um, even when we're out now in, uh, in Manhattan. And then uh, not too far from us, there's these uh, cool balloon. This is Dr. Uh, Fauci uh, balloon. And then this is a bunch of nurse balloons. So um, that's the main New York City factory footage for this week. And uh, not only do we talk to talk, we walk the walk. And uh, we'll be <laughs> probably in various ways wearing uh, masks. So we just wanted, yeah. to, we wanted to start to get people used to this idea. Um, now, we live together, so in a normal circumstance, we wouldn't be uh, wearing these at home, of course. Um, and then when we're out, uh, when we're around other people, we wouldn't be, uh, we would be this close. But everyone else has to stay, you know, back a little yeah. bit. Um, and uh, it's just something that I think we should all start to think about. We have the DIY mask tutorial, and you'll probably see guidance even from our government saying, hey, like, when you're out um, to stop the, the spread, uh, you, you may want to start wearing that. So we'll see how that goes. Yep. Um, let's... It's probably a good thing, and, and I think, you know, if, if we can get into the habit of wearing masks in the flu season in general, I think yeah. year over year will save lives not just from people getting sick from COVID, but from influenza in general. It's, yeah. it's a good thing. I lived in Tokyo, and it was not... I, I never thought twice about seeing people in masks, and it was just so much part of the culture. Yeah. And if you look at Singapore, and you look at uh, Japan, and then if you look at what happened with Wuhan... And also, um, we'll talk about this later, uh, Naomi, one of our friends, she's in China, she talks about the steps that uh, were taken, and this works. It, it works. Yeah. Um, you know, people can debate on Twitter... But um, you know what? It doesn't hurt to do this. Yeah. In fact, it looks like it helps a lot. So. Yeah, and these disposable masks are inexpensive. I mean, right now yeah. they're they're not available, <laughs> yeah. but very soon you'll be able to get them. And you can also sew your own. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's keep moving along. 3D printing. All right, Noah and Pedro have the sped up door 3D video. Take it away, Noah and Pedro. And don't forget to know Pedro show every single Wednesday at 11 a.m. And look for some special show-and-tell versions from them. They do hangouts every single week, but more soon with their own versions of show-and-tell. So, okay. Lady Ada, it is time. New, 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 new. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, we have a song here, so don't don't I'm say don't say it. I'm When you see that graphic, don't say that. I'll say it. Okay, here we go. Special thanks to DigiKey for supporting us and... 
all of you, and providing great electronic components. They are helping us with... That's right. It's time for INMPI. Yay. Okay, what is it this week, Lady Ada? Okay, so I try to mix it up a little bit every week because we're going to be doing this every week. So this INMPI, we're going to be looking at some enclosures. And I don't think engineers, uh, some engineers, like, they don't realize how many enclosures there are off the shelf that they can modify um, very easily to get their project or product looking really good without having to go all the way to injection molding. So this week we're going to be looking at the Hammond... 1552 series. Um, Hammond is like a well-known um, injection molded, you know, enclosure maker, and they make all sorts of shapes. I like this um, particular enclosure a lot. This is a series, so that's pretty common. Usually when you have a series, it's like you have different lengths, so there's like the long version, there's like a slightly shorter version. It's a two-piece. Sometimes these are called like soap boxes because they're kind of shaped like soap. They're like kind of long soap. Um, but they're handheld, um, they're two pieces, and what I think is really neat is they've got this kind of inset piece in the center here, um, you can see that you could put a sticker on top, and they've got these removable end plates, and then another nice thing about these end plates is that you can like buy just the end plates to machine, and you can put, um, you know, potentiometers or knobs or switches on them, put your PCB inside, I think we've got a diagram of the PCBs, they, they, you know, you can download all these CAD files and 3D models as well as how big your PCB can be um, with the four mounting holes in the center. If you design your PCB in that shape, it'll fit perfectly into the uh, enclosure. You can close it up. It's got like this lapped um, edge. So it's not like watertight, but it's pretty dust tight. And um, it has some cool accessories. So it used, used to be when you got an enclosure, you just got like two pieces and like you're on your own, but now they actually kind of come with some extra stuff, which I think is nice. Um, so let's go to the overhead and I'll show that off because I, I ordered these from DigiKey, got them yesterday. Um, so this is um, the enclosure style. So it comes with some screws that I've uh, removed, but um, you know, this piece uh, clips in and actually even has some snaps. And then these are the two removable pieces. Uh, so you can see um, these are thin ABS plastic. They're really easy to drill and machine. And if you're doing more than a couple, um, you can actually contact Hammond and like I think probably 50 or 100 pieces or more, they'll even do it for you. You give them the CNC file and they will um, cut and drill the front plate or the back plate or the side plates. Um, you can also pick up extra side plates if you want. And then um, what I thought was kind of neat is they have this extra like strain relief cable add-on so here you know you remove one of the end plates and you get this strain relief like rubbery soft piece so you can have a cable come out so this is really uh, nice if you're making a control box or maybe it has like a, some sort of a display here um, and then it's tethered to some machine um, these are often used for like control boxes or user interface boxes and then you know they have a sticker here or some face plate and these are machined or drilled out and um, you also get this kind of nifty uh, mounting plate. So you can see there's two uh, countersunk um, holes here. So you can screw this into the side of a, a machine or onto a wall. And then um, this fits very nicely and tightly. It's snug fitting. It's like a mounting plate. So these are kind of some nice extras that you get with this um, enclosure series. There's three sizes, but I kind of like this one the most. This is a kind of like a half remote control, half soap box size okay and then to get these you should go to digikey and the part number is yeah this is the part number for this particular enclosure uh 1641552 c3bk nd but if you just search for 1552 uh hammond on digikey.com you'll see the entire series they even have an introductory page that shows you all the extra pieces that you can get and they come in a couple different colors but of course uh black's my favorite okay and that's fine on All right, um, let's do new products. Okay. Ready? Yep. <laughs> okay, so uh, during new products each week, we'll remind everyone that uh, we are currently shipping essential orders. You can do that on your own on the site. You can check out and say uh, what you need. Um, however, if there's special needs, 
email COVID-19 at Adafruit.com. We are manufacturing and we are shipping essential goods right now. That's right. Um, you can buy Adafruit gift certificate, Adafruit.com slash gift certificates. That helps us quite a bit. Um, you can get Adafruit IO plus accounts. You can sign up for Adabox. We have under 50 slots left, but you should do it now because we're working with our partners to get those out while we're doing other things. And on to new we products. We do have some new products. We have some coming soon. And actually, some of these are going to be in very shortly. Maybe We've tomorrow. We've got fever scanners. Yeah, these are cool. So um, this is a thermal camera. It's actually a really nice quality thermal camera with like a 120 by 160 thermal array and a color display built in and like a user interface. So you can do all sorts of cool stuff like set alerts and take images and save them to the SD card. Um, we have two versions. One version um, is just standalone, and you can see the demo here. These are tuned specifically for fever scanning, and they're used in Asia for fever scanning. Um, and they're not too expensive either. Uh, they're a couple hundred bucks. Um, and um, they're tuned and calibrated to measure human temperature ranges. So off-the-shelf thermal cameras, like you get ones from you know, a hardware store or whatever, that are meant for um, like measuring pipes or looking at you know like a power supply. Those have a very wide range, but they're not as accurate and precise as these, which are yeah. like one degree accuracy. And let me tell you how we're using these at Adafruit. Yeah. So we have team members that are coming in. Now they're separate. You know they're not all crowded in the elevator. They're not all waiting in line. You know it's only one person at a time. However, one day we will be returning to some some version of work. And we'll probably have people coming in. And what we want to do is, uh, this is mountable and it goes into a laptop. Yeah. What we want to do is be able to say, okay, five people just walked in. One of them, it set off the, hey, you might want to come over and do secondary screening. Yeah. And um, you'd use like a temperature guy. Yeah. That is then, you, then you use a no contact uh, one. And we're going to be doing temperature stuff anyway. So then you walk over and it's like, oh, that said 99, but you know, actually it was 97.8. But these are very accurate. If you look at how China has flattened the curves, they say, these are in restaurants, they're in buildings, they're absolutely in everywhere. In malls, yeah. Yeah, and it's not that they're going to, it's not going to catch things. It's not. The whole point is you see it, it's another layer, and everyone starts thinking about their temperature. Everyone's taking their temperature now. If you're not feeling so good, take your temperature. Uh, if you're reporting to work, take your temperature. Today, Walmart announced that all their team members are getting PPE, and they're taking their temperature when they get in yeah so this is happening and you know if walmart's on this like you know like it's hard to steer that ship that that big ship um we've been doing this from the start have we had people in so this is just one thing and we're going to make these available to the people that need them oh well, we already carry a bunch of thermal cameras so i just thought this was really neat because this is um yeah. again tuned specifically for humans and we'll have a special video from our friend naomi in china who talks about this and that'll be out very soon and we'll make sure everyone sees that okay so right. two versions. One version uh, is a standalone. Well, they both work standalone, just like you see here. They have a battery built in. You can recharge it. And one of them is a little bit more expensive and has USB video output. So you can then pipe it to, like, um, you know, a larger laptop screen. So Because the screen is it's 2.8 inches. It's pretty small. If you want to have it, you know, on a larger screen, you could pipe it into a computer and it shows up as a video camera. Yeah. Okay. So Next. sign up. Coming soon. Next up, uh, we have engineering, manufacturing, R&D, and logistics services. One of the reasons that we had to do this was um, Lady Ada is working on some projects, and they want to reserve her time. Yeah. Um, we've donated a lot of time, but at some point, it's like, okay, what what can we do? So it's like, oh, here is a certificate of you know 10 hours of Lady Ada. Get 10 hours of Lady Ada. Or someone will want to pay us for logistics services. Or someone will want to pay us for R&D. Or someone will say, okay, like this has been fantastic. Uh, you've helped me work through a design. This is now going to uh, prototypes. Can you do a circuit board review? We have budget. We have a, a grant to take care of this. How can we pay you Adafruit to do this? Because that they, they, they if you do it for free, it doesn't really count. Don't they, worry. They're getting paid. Yeah. <laughs> it, no, they have to You know, yeah. say, like, okay, we, this is the person that we had review it. Yeah. And, we, and it's a service. So um, we have that available on our website now. Uh, you can check that out. And that's mostly for people who have already contacted us, but we had to have an easy way for, like, the government credit card. We're like, okay, just use this. Yeah. Um, next up, we have the uh, face shields. That we've been making. So these are not for, you know, individuals to purchase quite yet. Um, but we had to have uh, some inventory system in the store, and so we decided to make it live so that we could – because um, we had some uh, medical folks ask yeah. us, well, wh what does it look like? Can you give me specs? And I'm like, well, I'll just make a product page. Yeah, and, um, you know, 
one of the things that we wanted to do is, so the doctors who got these, um, we had sent off samples to Mount Sinai, and we got um, results today, and they said, these are fantastic. They last getting dipped in bleach. Um, we made these as low cost as possible. So these that you see around, it's up to like $11 plus. Uh, we're making ours for two bucks each, so it's basically just covering the materials. And so the, the thing that you do is wear it, you know, in addition to having a mask, because there's a lot of splash and a lot of things, and it's just another layer of protection. There, of course, be all these other PPE things, but this is just yeah, to show you. On the show. Okay. So hopefully, if all things work out, we will have a literal ton of this plastic, which is now getting uh, uh, bought out on planet Earth, and we'll be able to resume our manufacturing on these. We're working with the hospitals and the New York City government, and then we hope um, as New York's curve goes down, we'll be able to help supply these to other areas of the country. Also, a lot of people are able to make these, so I think, I think we've got a shot at this. Okay. okay. Next up, uh, pulse oximeter. Again, this is something that um, I actually plan to carry anyways because we've been doing Bluetooth pulse oximetry projects, and you'll see uh, those get published soon. Um, but we decided uh, while we're at it, why, why not also stock a non-Bluetooth version? This is coming soon. It's just a plain pulse oximeter. Um, for electronics people, first off, you might be able to hack into these and you know, extract signal, but it's also good if you are using um, you know, a max and pulse oximity chip and you want to calibrate it against a known good uh, pulse oximeter. So this, uh, you, know, you can use this as a, a low cost way to check your calculations or calibration for um, you know, a biosensing circuit. We have um, you know, the muscle sensors, EKG sensors, um, pulse sensors. So use this as a, as a known reference. It's a low cost, you know, two AAA batteries, fits on your finger and tells you your blood oxygen and uh, pulse rate. Yeah, we check ours every day. That's right. Yeah, we make sure that we're... Do biohacking. Yeah, I bought this back a few years ago when I was super fit and I wanted to, you know, totally biohack and like figure out how, how I can optimize myself. And then I put all that stuff away and got unhealthy. Uh, but now I'm trying to get healthy again. <laughs> so... Uh, okay. Okay, and that was new products. Right, ready? Yep. New, 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 new recap. Recap. Okay. Support data for gift certificates. And you can also support us with IO and AdaBox. We've got some uh, incoming fever scanners. Uh, these uh, 120 by 160 uh, calibrated thermal cameras specifically designed and calibrated to measure accurate human body temperature. Um, so you can use it for quick fever scanning. We have two versions, one with USB-C video out and one that's standalone. They're both standalone, but one also has video output. We have engineering, manufacturing, R&D and logistics services, uh, gift certificates slash coupons. Um, if you've contacted us and you want to uh, hire us to um, or pay for our services or, or logistics, uh, pick one of these up. We have a product page now for the DIY um, uh, face shields that we've been manufacturing for New York City hospitals. Uh, this is so uh, this is not available for people to purchase individually yet, um, but it's uh, a reference page. So uh, when we talk uh, to um, doctors and nurses and we want to show them what we made. Uh, eyes are a threat vector. Yeah, safe. Very safe. Can't, can't throw stuff at you. Um, we now have a product page with photos and videos and specs to okay. reference them. And also coming soon, a pulse oximeter. Uh, I really like this model. We've been using uh, this uh, company's pulse oximeters for our Bluetooth BLE projects. Uh, we'll be stocking a BLE one, but this one does not have BLE. So uh, this could be useful for biohacking or calibrating uh, your biosensing projects. That's new, new, new. All right, cool. Okay, let's, uh, let's do top secret. Okay. We have yeah. top secret. Um, we have a mini while, top secret. While we're doing top secret, though, please go over to adafruit.it slash discord. Join all 17,000 of us. We will start answering questions shortly, but for now, let's open the vault. Okay. Wait, Ada, what do you have that's top secret today? Well, top secret, I just got these. These are uh, the Saola boards from Espresso. This is the ESP32-S2. So this is the latest Espresso Wi-Fi chip. Um, it just has this the, the classic uh, Wi-Fi module that um, Espresso has popularized so much. And this one can do USB device. So we've sort of started getting TiniUSB working on it. Um, TiniUSB is also the uh, USB stack that they'll 
um, Espresso will be supporting the IDF. Um, and so this is our first step towards getting CircuitPython running on uh, this chip. So it's very exciting. Uh, thanks to Espresso to getting us um, these dev kits so fast, uh, we're already getting pull requests going. So that's coming soon, not out yet. Don't ask. Okay. Back in the vault. Back in the vault. Okay, we're going to go to Discord now, Adafruit Audio's Discord, and we're going to answer your questions. Yeah. The first question that is lined up, Lady Ada, is for the uh, fever scanner. Can you reconfigure it to scan other ranges of temperatures? And and I have an answer, but you, why don't you? I it? think I think you can. Um, you can check the manual. It's just not calibrated for that. Like it's not designed for that. Um, what they do is they really take measurements in that small, like, 10-degree range, and um, they do the best job they can because your emitted temperature is not your core body temperature, so they have to have the calibrated offset. Yeah. And so they do a very good job of that, um, whereas you can just get off-the-shelf ones. So if you're going to do other temperatures that aren't human... Like for cars, homes, Yeah, this is industry. HTI. So, you know, we tested all of these. There's the ones that work with iPhones, and then there's the ones that are made, you know, point at a car. Um, they're very interesting. They're very neat. They're super cool. And uh, here, we'll... Uh, do you want to point it at me? Uh, well, what I'm going to do real fast is just show you what's on the screen. So this will just give you an idea of uh, of the temperature of things. Okay. And you can see Lady 8 on there. But, you know, it's not meant for... This is meant for equipment and temperatures and high temperatures and low temperatures. It's not meant for the, the very specific range for humans. Um, and then when you hit this, boop, takes a photo, um, and so you can save it. But the the important thing to remember is like you know this is like a five hundred dollar one, but you're not gonna do you're not gonna do temperature. It's not it's not designed yeah. for human temperature. You'll notice that there's there, it's not calibrated, so the temperature isn't correct. Yeah. It's like you know because you have to know the emissivity of like human skin. Yeah, and this is really cool. Um, you plug it into you to USB and the the photos that you take. Shows up as a drive. It reminds me of Circuit Python. Yeah. Kind of cool. Okay. Uh, next up, um, for soil moisture sensing, I think the stem of soil sensor uses capacitive touch, whereas the buckaroo uses ADC. What is the better method for soil sensing? Is there any harm for plants in putting DC voltages into the soil? Um, there's no harm for plants either way. Um, DC voltages. The reason people don't like them is that if you keep the DC voltage active, eventually. You make you're making like an electrochemical plater, and your your contacts corrode. Um, it takes a while, but it does eventually happen if you're not careful. Um, people prefer capacitive sensing; um, they think it's a little bit more accurate. Um, but for something like the Buckaroo, which you know it's meant for a micro bit, a low cost chip, um, you know resistive testing is is just fine. Okay. Any plans to have from the Desk of Lady Ada? Yes. Uh, we're resuming Desk of Lady Ada very soon. As soon as uh, things calm down. Yeah, I'll be setting up the Desk of Lady Ada Studio once again. It will have a triumphant return. I'm looking forward to seeing all of you very soon. Okay, you mentioned Bluetooth pulse oximeter. Will there be will there also be a pulse oximeter component as in DIY projects like sewing into a glove? Yeah, I hope so. I want to now now that I'm going to get one of these pulse oximeters, I can actually test to see if if these sensors are any good. Okay, what's your best uh, resources for learning logistics? Are there any good guides out there, or is it more relationships you develop and build up your network? It is relationships. You really have to just do I'll, it. I'll say this right now. This is a tough time to learn logistics because everyone's trying to buy mass. Everyone is freaking out. It's Everyone, hard to get shipping. It's, it's unclear. The prices are weird. There's scams and everything. That being said, buy something from Taobao. Buy something from Alibaba. Start to talk to the people that send you the stuff. If you're going to buy in bulk, you can talk to them. Get WeChat. Start to make relationships with these people. I would say start with anything other than PPE right now. Yeah, I know. Anything, anything else. Buy, buy something like a stuffed animal or something, but yeah. stay away from the, the high activity. It's just, it's just practice. You just kind of yeah. have to get the feel for it. Um, you know, it's... You know, the, I, I have yeah. to explain to people why we do it a certain way, and they're like, why, you know, why not just buy everything? And I'm like, well, you know, I do sample shipments and how to fill out the paperwork. It's not easy, and there's really, yeah. there's no way to do it other than just doing it. I'll say this. So we had purchased uh, masks that we were going to donate to New York City, and they were purchased. We paid for them, and the factory said, well, you know, one of our partners is German, and they, like, co-own the factory or something, and they said all masks have to be directed to Germany. 
So we do not get those. Yep. That is what's going on right that now. That happens. Um, okay. Are any of the Adafruit temp sensors sensitive and accurate enough to make your own for the for a human human temperature sensing? Um, all temperature sensors need to be calibrated. Um, we've been using the MCP ninety eight hundred eight, and then you know you have to calibrate it again because surface temperature of humans is not the same as the core uh, temperature. So like you know even these you know uh, non contact guns like they're they're calibrated like the temperature they measure then they they add an offset or they multiply by a certain amount to to match what is your core temperature okay uh do y'all play video games what video game are you playing now uh, i'm trying out um animal crossing okay but I, is, don't, I don't quite get it is circuit python available for beaglebone uh yeah we have a blinka library for it uh check it out you should be able yep. to pip install all right uh this is uh love to spain and then this is uh another just comment thanks very much for your products they changed my life oh, that's good great hope it changed for the better um okay uh, next up, uh, oh, that's right. Um, Bunny has a pretty good guide on how to do business yeah. with China too. You can think download it now because yes, it's out of print. It's out of print, so read the okay. book. Um, and then, are they difficult to calibrate for the maker? The um, it's not hard, sensors? but you have to do it right. You have to read okay. up on how to do it and, and do it correctly. Okay, well, let me hit the rest of the chats, and I think we are just about done with the tonight's show. Uh, Yes, you can buy a gift certificate if you want to support Adafruit. Um, I put the links in the chat for that. Um, I think I got to all of them. Good. Great. All right, everybody. Hi, right, thanks, everybody. So that is our show for tonight. Uh, thank you for being together with us. Um, thank you, all of our Adafruit team members that are out there. Let me see who's running things behind the scenes in our Slack tonight. I believe this Jesse May. Hey Jesse May. Hey, Jesse May. Thank you. Jesse May's in Slack. Um, thank you, all of our Adafruit employees who are um, working. I don't say working at home. They're at home in a crisis, trying to work. trying to work. Some and of I, them are. And and you know what? It and we're all we're all cutting each other Slack because this is very new, and a lot of our team members. This is the first time. Oh, I should mention so. We didn't lay off anyone. We didn't fire anyone. We're paying everyone. Um, today uh, was payroll, and then we also have our tax bill. It's millions of dollars, and uh, it's painful, and it hurts, and um, it's 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 not enjoyable. But you know, uh, this is what you have to do. Everyone has to make sacrifices. Everyone has to figure out a way to get each other through this. Mm -hmm. And we're going to do this, and we're going to be better together on the other side. Um, so today payroll was interesting because it wasn't just payroll; it was life. It was um, some families. The Adafruit job is it. They, the rest of the family lost their jobs. Yeah. Some people uh, they're taking care of someone who's sick. They have Adafruit healthcare. So more so than ever, it's so precious to have a stable thing right now. So, um, anyways, special thanks to everyone who ran payroll today, uh, <laughs> Mo and Jenny and so And thanks for CFO, making and sure we have money in the bank. Thanks to Stella. And thank you, everyone out there supporting us. I know some of you bought gift certificates. Some of you, like, said, what can I do? Um, and you, and you're, you're helping us out in a variety of ways. So uh, just thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, we'll continue okay. to provide updates here from New York City. Um, please, everyone, if you're not an essential worker, stay home. Um, it's the one thing. That's all you have to do. Watch Adafruit videos. That's all you have to do. And uh, the sooner we all do this and the and the better we are at s staying home, um, the faster this will be over and the faster we can be together again. But until then, we'll be together in this way, which is kind of what we do every week anyways. That's so, right. So thanks for being part of this um, with us. We'll see everybody next week. Here is your moment of Zener. Thanks, everybody. Good night.